time is precious, so let's get to it. Number two. We got Kaiser video style. <laughs> I guess that's all that needs to be said. Hi everyone and welcome to our Bison pregame show, sponsored by Gate City Bank. What a quick turnaround there from radio to television, live from Northern Illinois. For the first time, we've done this show everywhere. We've done it in tailgating lots, we've done it in press boxes. Today's a first. We've never done it in a garage before, and that's where we're at today, thanks to the Willie family. Adam will actually join us coming up later in our show to, uh, first off, describe how a Bison fan is here in Normal Illinois and how he got our show here today. Well, thank God he's in Normal yes. Illinois. Thank God he's a block from the stadium, too, so <laughs> yeah, we couldn't ask for any the game, time. The game is starting here shortly, and thank goodness we're indoors, Colpack. For those that are going to be watching the football game, and of course, our highlights and stuff coming up later, it ain't nice out today. Well, coming in, I opened up my phone, and there was a flash flood warning. I don't know if that's really good when it's come on a, on a college football game day, but you can see the water around here. It is not nice. No. Rain aside, the, really the biggest factor is going to be the wind, Dom. Yeah. You're talking somebody out on the field right now throwing up a football, and it's going sideways. And the wind's only supposed to pick up as the day goes on. And the issue with everything to play for today, Jeffrey, a chance to win the outright Missouri Valley Championship, a likely two or three seed. We'll debate that later uh, in today's show. Illinois State, even more to play for for them. It's a win and in today for the Redbirds. It is. It's do or die. You can put any cliche you want <laughs> on the Illinois State Redbirds. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting how they're going to be able to attack this game because it's a, it, first of all, they have two quarterbacks. Yep. Who's going to play? We think it's going to be Malachi Brobnax, who is the more multidimensional. He can run or he can pass. But when you take the pass out of the equation, also that makes him one-dimensional. Right. And we know what happens when NDSU makes defenses one-dimensional. Right, Here the weather has made them one-dimensional. Yeah. We always start off with our what to watch for. You talked about weather. That's where you're going to lead off here today. Absolutely. When it's a bad weather game and it doesn't happen very often, we've seen over the years very few, very few poor weather games but it's got to be turnovers. Yeah. And when NDSU was not good this year, what happened? Five turnovers against South Dakota State. they got to hang on to the ball. It's going to be wet. It's going to be windy. It won't be so cold. I don't think the cold will bother I don't think guys so. Yeah. Because it's not like it's zero degrees yeah. here at Lambeau Field. But it's still, weather will play a factor, and you've got to hang on to the ball. You know what I'm really curious about? If Easton Stick wears gloves uh, today. He's never done that before, but granted, he's never played in a wet conditions like this before. Oh, well, we've never seen it. Yeah. We've never seen it. The last time we saw a wet football was Carson Wentz when they threw water on it. Yeah, that's pro right. That's right. It pro day. That's right. My what to watch for is pretty simple. Keeping the ball on the ground today for NDSU. They ran it so well last week against South Dakota. That was the Bison offense that fans have come used to that we didn't see against South Dakota State. Illinois State's up front, they're really good on the defensive line. But if the Bison O-line, we're going to talk about what they're missing up front. They do that today, I think they're really hard to beat. If you want to talk about offensive lines, yeah, that's where this game will most likely be won or lost, and especially when it's really windy. One thing to look for, Illinois State's played a lot of freshmen on offense this year, and they've played a few freshmen on the offensive line. And that's tough when it comes to a game like this. It's one thing to play maybe a lesser FCS with right. an inexperienced offensive line, but the Bison defense... They rotate guys. I mean, they've been rotating guys left and right. They'll be fresh during the game. And it'll be, it'll be a matter if that Illinois State offensive line for, for the Redbirds yeah. can hold up to that. It's been really interesting here for Illinois State. You talked about them in our post-game shows, I think, for about four straight weeks. They started off 4-0. Now they've lost four of their last six. They've had games where they were up by two touchdowns at halftime and then lose by three touchdowns. What in the world do we make of this team? Well, I'm talking to Brock Spack this week. He said the biggest thing he's noticed is inexperience. Inexperience in some key positions. That, I mean, when you have Roberson and Copperidge, you're able to be pretty consistent right. on offense. But when you have, you're not sure who the quarterback's going to be. You have a freshman thrown in there. You have some freshmen in the offensive line maybe in key spots, like we said. That's where I think the inconsistency has come. Now, here we are, another week, another couple of injuries. We're finding out Mike McFeely reporting Austin Coonert starting right guard and starting a wide receiver Darius Shepard likely not to play today. Let's first deal with Coonert. Any issue didn't seem to be affected by that after he left the game, but how big a deal is this today? It's going to be big. If Zach Zemer goes in, Luke Bacon, a couple of those guys yeah. are going to have to pick up the kid. You know, you're going to have to be farm tough today. And may maybe <laughs> Big E will get in it later in the show, but this is a farm tough game. And I don't think that's going to be a biggest factor. I don't think Shepard will be a big factor because I don't know how much he's going to throw the day. Guy that's grabbed our attention, I wanted to focus on him real brief before we wrap up our first segment, is 
quarterback Marquise Bridges and how he played last week against South Dakota. We're about a year and a couple months into the transition of him going from wide receiver to cornerback. I thought we really started to see him get into a feel, feel into his own position last week. He made some plays last week. Yeah. He made some plays physically and he made some plays, I think, in, in guarding receivers. They weren't getting open. That's key. This is the first year, I think, you've always had a couple corners for, the, for NDSU. But to add another guy into the mix like that, and he's, I mean, to make that transition, it takes a year yeah. at least, and we're seeing the results right now. He'll play a lot today. Don Davis out of the lineup with a groin injury. Not sure when he'll return, so we'll see number nine out there a bit more. We come back. We'll introduce you to our hosts on our Bison pregame show. Live from Normal, we continue after this, sponsored by Gate City Bank. Have a story idea? Call us. Our newsroom is always open to take your call and hear your story. Dial 701-241-5306 or email us at news at WDAY.com. Providing the voice for our community. WDAY. Prosperity is today's investment in tomorrow's promise. The promise of a better way of life. With every act of kindness, every act of creation, and with every act of love, we strengthen our community. And when we stand together as a community, we accomplish the impossible. We can choose to pass through life, or we can choose to pass on a better way of life. News can happen anywhere, at any time. So if you see news happening, shoot it. Send your photos or videos to WDAY by email to news at WDAY.com or post them to our Facebook and Twitter pages. pregame show live from Normal, Illinois, getting ready for North Dakota State, Illinois State coming up at the top of the hour. As I mentioned, first time ever we've taken the pregame show to a garage. And first time in five years we've been here in Normal, Illinois. Dr. J actually came out way back when in 2012. We, uh, we can't forget Dr. J. No, we're we're at the there. Willie household. Adam Willie joins us here on our Bison pregame show. Adam, a diehard Bison fan, apparently his family as well. All right, so you live in Normal, Illinois. How in the world are you a Bison fan in Redbird country? How did that happen? So, my parents both went our alumni, and my dad got a teaching job down here at junior high here in town. Okay. And his grandparents lived down here, so he moved down here for that. So You're a senior at Normal West High School, which is what, right up the hill or around the corner or whatever. <laughs> do you wear your Bison swag to school? Or oh, what yeah. Do they say? oh, yeah. I wore that all this week. I had yeah. some teachers <laughs> commenting on it, so... Describe what a couple of years ago was like for you then when they played each other in the national championship game. What was that like for you? Oh, we went over, it was the night before, we went over to Hancock Stadium. Mm. For some reason the gates were open. <laughs> we, we went on to the, there's a little hill before you go down to the stadium. We took a picture with our Bison product. Nice. Flight. And we got posted on the, all the social media. All right, very cool. Well, there's always Bison Road fans, and rarely do you see fans living a block from the stadium, much <laughs> less, but... Uh, do you see, do you sense when you're away from Fargo the enthusiasm for the team on the road? Yeah, in a way. Yeah. There's a lot of fans I've noticed that go to away games. Yeah. There's a good presence of Bison Nation, even here in town. You see it around. 
Oh yeah. yeah. How much more is it picked up here locally now with NDSU? You get, I'm, I'm assuming you you don't have questions like what the heck team are you representing yeah, here? People no. know who NDSU is around town now, right? Yeah. All right. How do you see the game? What's going to be? Uh, I think it's going to. Well, now that there's snow down on the forecast, <laughs> yeah. I think that's going to get better by the big, minute, Cole. <laughs> that might be a big factor. So I think it's going to be like a six-three type Ooh, game. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we're bringing a little North Dakota with us with the snow. Is it going to be snow? Wow. Fan, sounds fantastic. Thank you for hosting us today. We really appreciate you reaching out and doing this. This has been fantastic. And thankfully, we're inside today. We appreciate that. Adam Willie joining us here at our Bison pregame show. We come back, a look at one of India Shoots now saviors in the backfield, Ty Brooks. That's coming up. We come back live from normal after this. Have a story idea? Call us. Our newsroom is always open to take your call and hear your story. Dial 701-241-5306 or email us at news at WDAY.com. Providing the voice for our community. WDAY. Prosperity is today's investment in tomorrow's promise. The promise of a better way of life. With every act of kindness, every act of creation, and with every act of love, we strengthen our community. And when we stand together as a community, we accomplish the impossible. We can choose to pass through life, or we can choose to pass on a better way of life. News can happen anywhere, at any time. So if you see news happening, shoot it. Send your photos or videos to WDAY by email to news at WDAY.com or post them to our Facebook and Twitter pages. back everybody to our bison pregame show from normal illinois which now apparently snow is included in our <laughs> forecast today bison and redbirds coming up at the top of the hour my blog starting shortly on inforum.com well jeff the bison are thankful for another savior in the backfield after the injuries to lance dunn ty brooks the fargo south kid has emerged after the injury to lance dunn brooks who had a battle injury himself he missed five <laughs> games is now showing the promise that football fans in the EDC saw three years ago. Ty Brooks has had some special games in the Fargo Dome, but nothing compares to what happened Saturday. 152 yards and three touchdowns in the route of South Dakota. It was fun to have. Uh, it was fun for my family to be there. I know my mom was really excited about it. She read the paper on Sunday, called me, woke me up, screaming in the phone. So it was fun, just everything that I've put the time in and effort and it's all paid off. And it gives it to Brooks on the reverse and look at him use his speed and he may go. Ty Brooks on the opening kickoff will bring it back for a touchdown. Brooks was part of one of the most dominant backfields in North Dakota history. He paired with South all-time leading rusher James Johannesson as the Bruins went on to claim the 2013 state championship. It's been an interesting road to the Bison end zone for Brooks. When he first arrived on campus in 2015, the Bison coaches had him playing defense. That lasted for a couple of months till he was moved back to his usual spot, and he hasn't stopped running. Just put a lot of time in in the spring uh, to get to where I was back on the field again like I was in high school, just playing a lot. 
So it started in the spring, and I feel like it's just carried over through fall camp and out of season. We didn't know what he was going to be. You know, uh, we just knew he was really quick, had some good uh, speed, maybe could cover. And once we settled him in after his true freshman year, once we settled him in at running back, uh, he's really taken off. And, uh, you know, when you're behind Lance and you're behind Bruce and he had King and Chase there last year, there wasn't a lot of carries for him. Uh, but uh, uh, this year he's come into his own because he's he's – put the time and effort in to learn the playbook. Now that he's getting more reps, he's making sure his former teammate knows who's fastest once and for all. He knows. <laughs> he knows, and he's known since high school. I don't know why Why y'all keep asking that question. It's really interesting to me, because you and I covered both these guys in high school. Johannesson, he had a lot of the attention, Jeff, and obviously so. He was going to go to a Big Ten school. Now he's transferred to the University of North Dakota, but it seems now Brooks might have the, the upper hand in these two. Well, he's playing in the right system for him. He's yep. got that speed. He's averaging 10.1 yards a carry. He's fresh. I know he had yep. those injuries, but in a sense, he hasn't been beat up all, all right. year. He hasn't had all those carries. I think Big E put it appropriately on our radio show this morning that when it's a weather game like this, and everybody's crowding the line, there's going to be the tendency to want to stack the line. Meaning, mm -hmm. I think somebody's going to be susceptible, like Brooks, to maybe break one. It's not going to take much to get through the line if they're crowding the line. You're giving Big E props. Man, I know the weather's going to go crazy today. We come back. The man, the myth, the legend himself will join us on our Bison pregame show. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what you're doing right now. you got everything out here. I think I'm a bad mix between Tom Landry and Ric Flair right now. I'm kind of a prop mess. That, it's definitely not me. Oh, well. Marlboro, what man. Rome, do as the Romans. <laughs> Let's get this thing cranked up here. This is an actual photo of Dom Izzo in 2010. No beast mode today. But I am bringing out the belt. <laughs> this is going to be for the Missouri Valley Football Conference Championship. <laughs> We come back, Eric Peterson joins us. We'll do our pick em segment and wrap things up here from normal right after this. Have a story idea? Call us. Our newsroom is always open to take your call and hear your story. Dial 701-241-5306 or email us at news at WDAY.com. Providing the voice for our community. WDAY. Prosperity is today's investment in tomorrow's promise. The promise of a better way of life. With every act of kindness, every act of creation, and with every act of love, we strengthen our community. And when we stand together as a community, we accomplish the impossible. We can choose to pass through life, or we can choose to pass on a better way of life. News can happen anywhere, at any time. So if you see news happening, shoot it. Send your photos or videos to WDAY by email to news at WDAY.com or post them to our Facebook and Twitter pages. Everybody, Eric Peterson joins us on our Bison pregame show sponsored by Gate City Bank as we wrap up our coverage today, get ready for NDSU and Illinois State coming up at the top of the hour. Don't forget, we'll have our postgame show, bracketology show still to come. I know Colpac's got some sort of, he might outdo you in the prop, you know, he has to have the magisterial entrance. 
on the on the bracketology show. He's done that for years. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of the Masters. He likes hobbling, <laughs> hobbling into the the cabin. I don't know if I'm Jim Nance that. I don't know how that works. But yeah. what do you make here? We got snow. Dogs and cats living together in mass hysteria, apparently, for today's game. I don't know. I mean, sometimes when you see the weather, you overplay how bad it's going to be. I think it's going to be hard to tell until the game happens, and each team kind of feels it out. Can you throw the ball? Can you not throw the ball? Can you kick the ball? Can you not kick the ball? I, I think there's, gonna, there's a lot of unknowns that this weather is going to create today. Biggest thing, I think, is you mentioned it earlier, is hanging out of the football. Turnovers, and I think you mentioned on radio, the team that scores first... I think it's an outstanding shot maybe to win the football game. It's almost a mental boost yeah. if you score first. I mean, if you go up 7 nothing, even 14 nothing, if you get a two-touchdown lead early, just mentally what it yeah. does to the other team in these conditions, when it's bad weather, it, you know, when it's bad out, the team on the losing end, it just feels worse, yeah. right? And I, I know you talked about Easton Stick possibly wearing gloves, but one thing to think about, I talked to a Brandon Zilstra, former Concordia yeah. guy who's playing in the CFL now, when it's too rainy, he took his gloves off for like the first time ever since grade school because if those gloves get soaked, they're maybe really not that say, good. Yeah. So if it's wet enough, maybe some people who normally wear gloves might take them off mm. because if those things get drenched, the ball just slips through there. All right, let's lead off with some predictions here. What do you think of today's game, Bison, Illinois State? Well, Kopax had this theme throughout the show today, and I'm going to accentuate it. I mean, oh. you must be reading my mind today, but this game's <laughs> going to come down to what I have in this bag right here. Farm tough? What do you have? It's got to be You farm brought tough. the belt out last week to the... Nope. What, what is this? Turnover champion. Oh. <laughs> this is all about all turnovers. Right. The Miami Hurricanes turnover chain. I didn't have the budget. I, was to I, I didn't have the budget to quite get the Miami turnover chain. But this game is all about turnovers. And I, wait, I got something for you, too. Oh, it? really? You got, I, I hope I have a chain of my own here. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. That's oh. the farm tough version oh, of the right. turnover okay. chain. Because that's like real chain. That's gold. But it's, all about, heavy. it's all about turnovers today. Uh, can uh, Illinois State hang on the ball? Can NDSU? Well, Randy Reinhardt said earlier in the show that Broadnax, our quarterback, has had some issues yep. handing off the ball. The team that's more sound and doesn't turn the ball over wins. I'm going to give the edge to NDSU more experience, better defense overall. 21-14. I'll stick by my paper All right, yeah. but I don't know if it'll get to 21-14. to 14 This is heavy, by the way. It's heavy around here. I like NDSU to win the football games. Just how they ran the ball last week, Colpac, how they played defense. That was the team we had seen for the first nine games prior, or eight games prior to the South Dakota State game. I think... They know what's at stake today. They want to play at home in the playoffs. I know you can't take me seriously with this. <laughs> That's not a good look. I think the you. Bison win it. I think it's going to be 7 to 3. I'm going to That's change just my not a good, I'm I sorry. Not a good That's just not a good look. You're not the chain type of guy. I am not. That. What do well, you got? Well, earlier this week or earlier this year, the first game of the year was Brock Spack Bobblehead. Game. Yes. You can't find a Brock Spack Bobblehead anywhere. They're 25 bucks. On eBay, and I don't have the budget like you for that. Oh yeah, this was big, bring out the big chain, dollars right? to get the turnover change here. So I had to go to the invitation. Oh, you brought it out of the studio. I brought Burgundy back because he has an amazing resemblance, resemblance yeah. to Brock Speck. It's unfortunately it's not the real thing today. You got to be the real thing. Illinois State will not be able to handle. I think the NDSU interior line. It's going to be a, a farm tough game. It's not going to be a Burgundy. A, it made for TV camera game. It's going to be real men football. The Bison win 20 to 6. All right, there we go. With my own pride. <laughs> I you brought the budget. Out, you brought this out five years ago, the last time we were here in Normal. We got a roll. Kickoff coming here at the top of the hour. We'll see you guys after the game, post game show, and our bracketology show here from Normal.